Hello and welcome to this section of the HP 50 tutorial. Uh, in this section we're going to wrap up our discussion of the symbolic solver menu here and once you get to the end you just hit the next button. There's one more function I'd like to talk about now and that's called zeros. This is how to find the zeros of a polynomial exactly. So if you type a polynomial in the calculator will solve for the crossings of where that polynomial crosses the x-axis that's basically setting y equal to zero and finding the uh, solution to that and trying to present that to you. So the way you do it is very simple. You enter the equation uh, and then you tell what variable you're, you're, saw, you're basically the independent variable uh, and then you go from there. So let's go into the matrix, I'm sorry, the equation writer and type our first guy in. Let's do 3x squared, uh, then we'll go down here, minus 2x and then we have minus 1 equals, actually you don't even need to type equals 0 because this is a polynomial, right? This is what you would see as a polynomial. Um, you know, there's more than one way to do things in this calculator. You could set this equal to 0 and solve for x using the isolate function, but I'm trying to show you how to use the 0 function, so really all you need to do for that is just type the polynomial in. You don't have to set it equal to 0 because it knows it has to set it equal to 0 to find the zeros. Then you put x on the stack. All right, so you have a polynomial. Here's a second degree polynomial. Uh, finding zeros, is x is the independent variable, is all this is telling it. And you find the zeros, it'll think for a second, and it'll tell you the zeros are at positive one and negative one third. And that's an exact solution. It's trying to give you it in terms of a fraction. So like I said, you can accomplish the same thing by typing that equation in, making it equal zero, and then isolating for x or solving over here for x. It'll give you the same answers. But a lot of people will come over here and say, what's this for? And this is exactly what it's for. Now let's go ahead and type in a more complicated equation and see what happens. We'll go to the equation writer. We'll type in 4 times x raised to the fourth power minus 3x third, 3 times x to the third power plus 2x squared, 2x squared like this. So this is a polynomial, 4, 3 polynomial. So we hit enter on the stack. We'll put x on the stack. Now notice we have 4, 3 polynomial. So when we solve this guy, we expect to get, and set it equal to 0 and solve it, we expect to get 4 solutions, right? So let's go ahead and hit zeros and see what happens. We only have 3 solutions. So you might scratch your head here and say, what's going on? This calculator obviously doesn't know what's going on. Well, the zeros function, the thing that calculates it here, it's not going to give you any any roots that have any multiplicity to them. So in this case we have this complex guy, this is the complex conjugate, so these form a nice pair. The other root, which is the third root, is zero. So the fact that you only see this root one time, the calculator just doesn't tell you multiplicity and roots. So you know that there has to be four um, four zeros, I should say, of this polynomial, it doesn't list it two times. It just lists the physical, basically the physical crossings, or in this case, the one physical crossing we have here, and then we have two imaginary guys. So it's not going to give you the multiplicity. So you just kind of need to use your knowledge of algebra to realize these are the places where, you know, it sets it equal to zero and it solves for. These are the unique solutions, in other words. We know that fourth degree polynomials really have four solutions, so therefore this one must have multiplicity of two. And you learn all about that in algebra as well. So the zeros function is, is, is nice to have. You just type the polynomial in, you type the independent variable in, it'll find the crossings of setting this guy equal to zero. It's doing exactly the same thing as setting it equal to zero and solving for x. So you don't really have to use that function. I'm just teaching you how to use it just in case you prefer to use it. But you can use these other guys to accomplish the same task. That about wraps up what I want to cover now in the symbolic solver menu. Um, solving equations is something you do all the time in math, so you'll know that you'll be using this a lot. The only other things we didn't talk about in this menu are the differential equation solver here and the linear differential equation solver here. We'll talk about those much later when we talk about differential equations. So for now, get comfortable with this menu. Realize it's trying to give you exact solutions. Later on, we're going to talk about the numeric solver menu, which has a similar set of tools, but it doesn't try to give you exact answers. It gives you decimals, which are, you know, fine for for most uses it's just not they're not technically exact because they they have a truncation they have a decimal point so we'll get to that in due time so stay tuned for the numeric solver menu where we'll accomplish similar things 
with approximate solutions.